God wants to be our Father. Everything I read in the Bible shows me that God wants to be the Father and wants to take care of us. God wants to take care of us and give us things when we're good and doing His will. Thank you for taking the time to listen to our weekly service. This is a listener-supported ministry, and we ask that you pray and see what God would have you give. Now let's get to our sermon for today. Well, today's Father's Day, and uh, we're going to talk about fathers and try to uh, challenge them. And we're going to start off with Proverbs chapter 4, verse 1, which is most of the verses are going to be talk about will be in this, so you only have one or two verses to look up in your Bible. It says here, ye children, the instructions of a father, and attend to knowing understanding. I give you good doctrine. Forsake ye not my law, for I was my father's son, tender and only beloved in the sight of my mother. He taught me also, and said unto me, Let thy heart retain my words. Keep my commandments and live. Get wisdom, get understanding. Forget it not, neither decline from the words of my mouth. Forsake her not, for she shall preserve thee. Love her and she shall keep thee. Wisdom is the principal thing, therefore get wisdom. And with all thy getting, get understanding. Exalt her, and she shall promote thee. She shall bring thee to honor. When thou dost embrace her, she shall give to thy head an ornament of grace, a crown of glory shall she deliver to thee. You can fuss at her for having the thing on I'll pass. <laughs> Why? You're afraid? <laughs> Anyhow, some of us have lost our <laughs> earthly father. I lost my dad nine years ago. My father did everything right as I was growing up, as I look back. My father uh, got saved. I, th- I, I never did ask if they both got saved at the same time or not. But he started to go to church, and he started go, growing in God's grace. Uh, he learned to be a godly father, and he worked hard. That's one thing, if anybody says anything, my dad worked hard, and every chance, opportunity he had to work overtime, he worked overtime. And he knew how to save his money, and just they, they did it. he did everything right. And, uh, and, uh, and still took time for the family. He really never forsaked us. Um, which was neat. He even had a good retirement. He worked for uh, for Westinghouse Aerospace Division and, and retired 30 years after working there. And he even set up a plan on my mom so when he died, she gets his retirement, you know, which generally does not happen. But he had to pay for it. He had to set that up, pay for it. And uh, my dad... Uh, started inviting my wife and I to to our service and eventually we got saved because of what they did there and we both accepted Christ as our Savior the same night and uh, and because of my dad we had what I would consider the perfect middle class family and uh, we weren't rich but we weren't poor you know they worked for everything and and uh, my dad was just a great example for me to live by and my dad punished me when I needed it, and I needed it a lot. <laughs> and uh, uh, one time, my mom always would say, when your father gets home, you're going to get it. That's, that was her famous words. And let me tell you, I feared my dad because he would take the belt off and wrap it around one time and then whip me with the, you know, my behind. And I was so scared one time that I kept thinking, what could I do? And, for, and obviously I wasn't saved or anything at this age, but I went and found the New Testament Bible stuck in my back pocket, thinking that would help. Believe it or not, I did not get a spanking that night. Now, I don't know why, but... Uh, <laughs> my brother always said I was the black sheep of the family. On the other hand, I seemed to do everything wrong. 
I didn't follow my fa father's footsteps the way I should have. I worked job to job. I worked somewhere between, I know I had five, but I think I had six. In one year, six different jobs. And I didn't get fired from them. I just kept jumping because I did not know what I wanted to do for a living. And, uh, and, uh, and I just, and I finally eventually became self-employed. And I was married during this time while I was doing all this changing. And, uh, and uh, one thing, like when, when we decided to get married, I told her she's marrying a race car as well as me. And I literally spent most of my money on the race car rather than the family. And, uh, and uh, which I'm not proud of, but like I said, I, I did not follow my father's footstep. And even then, being self-employed, one of the problems I had was I didn't have insurance for the family if we had something major go wrong. So I kind of re related to what you were telling me a couple weeks ago. And, uh, but I was fortunate we never had that situation to where it occurred. And uh, I never saved for retirement. Never it just seemed like I had the money to do it, but I learned a long time ago you always have enough money, even if it's just ten dollars each week out of your pay. You'd be shocked on how that will add up a year, a year, a year, a year. I know. Uh, I got a neat retirement plan that I try to get my young kid. I'll give it to you. Don't get rid of any toy that you ever get. Store it someplace because when you get old enough, it's going to be worth a fortune. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's why I do my Legos. <laughs> or my Pokemon cards. Yeah. Save them up, wait till they're fourth and fortune. Sell them all. <laughs> but anyhow, uh, I had a great example, but I didn't follow it. But we who are saved have a Father which is in heaven. Here in Proverbs chapter the whole chapter 4 the whole chapter there but in chapter 1 God speaks directly to us who are fathers we have a second chance to do right and God gave me a second chance to do right and I started as I grew closer to the Lord I started following the Lord and things started changing in my life and uh, with all the mistakes that I made and in the first, verse 1 God tell says he's our father which is in heaven he has left us the Bible, which is our instruction book, and it tells you how to raise a family and everything else if we just follow it. For those of us who need a second chance to do right, and I was one of them, and I started learning the Bible, I started changing, and God was working in my life to change me to the good, and God helped me to change. He helped me to change the way I was raising my kids. I was doing that wrong, and all. And uh, once I started realizing that, I changed my way of doing it, and it actually improved my relationship between me and my, my kids. And all. It took several years to do that, but how to love my wife, how to be responsible, how to get out of debt. Boy, was I in debt. Uh, I mean, I was in big debt. It took many years, and plus I owed IRS probably more money than most people ever owe them. And I managed, um, my greatest day between me and my father was the, when I paid my last payment to IRS and I was out of debt and I called him up. Because my dad, like probably most dads is, was always concerned, am I in debt? When are you going to get out of debt? And like that. So that day I called him up. I was in tears just to tell him, hey, I did it. I found me. And he was happy. So God had been good to his word in my life. And I realized and that's why I try to teach you all that. And, you know, I use the same illustration week after week. This, the closer you get to God, the closer God gets to you. And I just can tell you that from my own life because it's been going on for 30, 40 years now. And, uh, and it hasn't changed. And, uh, and it keep getting closer. Now, am I perfect? No. Nobody ever will be. But if you're working overtime to get close to the Lord that means reading, praying doing what you learn go home and apply it all you'll be shocked now you can have a reasonably good life and still not be close to the Lord because good things happen to bad people do they not? yeah there's lots of bad people out there that are billionaires right now and got all the money they can do what they want 
and all. But well, here's the thing I've learned the most. For a Christian, things could you could be satisfied with your life right now. But you have no idea that you get close to God how much happier you will be. And how he will start things will happen. I didn't even pray about that. And here God bless this or that. Give you for instance that I told you something last week, something else happened this week. Uh, we have Bermuda grass. I don't know if you're familiar with it, but it's a, kind of like a vine. And what it'll do, it'll start growing over and replant itself. And then grow again and replant. And it's all one vine, but it keeps replanting itself as it grows. At all. And it will grow under the right conditions. Well, we had put down t- two trees we bought across the street here one day, the um, dogwoods, for $35 a piece, which was... I mean, that was a steal for a dogwood, and they were about that high. Uh, we put mulch around it, but the, the grass is growing <laughs> because anything that's loose, it loves loose, saying whatever. And it grew in there, and so Betty's trying to pull the grass out. What is it? It's a vine. It's going out back out. I said, man, what are we going to do to stop this? So I said, how about stones? Well, I don't want to put stones out. And, uh, and it will try to make it through the stones because I had that problem over back by the shed. And uh, I said, well, we'll have to build a gully around it, uh, you know, at the outside of the uh, mulch. I don't want to do that. But, you know, I mean, you know how bad it is outside right now trying to do yard work. But I said, I don't want to do that this year. I went in, and she's out there clipping the grass that's coming out of the mulch, trying to get that. And I'm sitting there praying, and I pray for wisdom. And I'm sitting there going, what can we do? And, uh, and then, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes later, after I stopped praying and all, boing! <laughs> I went, I, you know what an edger is? Well, we have one that connects to my weed eater. You know, it, it hits, uh, and I've had it for, gosh, 20-some years. And, uh, and I went, well, if I go around the edger, I don't have to worry about it, and it will go three inches deep, so it's going to cut the Bermuda. And, uh, and if I do that every week, the Bermuda won't have a chance to go into the mulch. And it takes me a moment to go around. I mean, it, it, the mulch is only about this wide, you know. So, I mean, it takes, <laughs> what, 30 seconds or a minute to go around. But that, was, to me, was a blessing. I was praying for wisdom to make a decision, and God helped me figure it out. And, uh, and we can do that with anything. Whether it's, you know, we're great prayer warriors with big problems. But I like praying for the small ones, too, and, and getting something like that. And the fact that I didn't want to dig that ditch around there either. <laughs> you know, we got clay. I don't know. You all got clay, too? This is the clay area. And, uh, and it's hard to dig through that stuff. It really is. So that's just an example there. Now, God tells us to hear his instruction. He says, he tells us in verse 1 to hear the instructions. David, now this is talking about David, you know, most of the stuff in Proverbs is David and Solomon. Solomon did most of the writing, okay? David taught Solomon by experience because he did a lot of major mistakes, big blunders in his life. And what I like about David is Beersheba probably was his biggest one, one of his biggest ones. Now, what did he do? He had his, her husband killed, number one. He had sex with her before they got married and all. And yet, Beersheba is the mother of Solomon. In case you didn't know that. <laughs> and, and who's the virtuous woman in chapter 30? It's Beersheba. Now... To me, that's the forgiveness of God. Took something, and now, how did he? Um, uh, how the, he lost something because of what he did? That was his firstborn, and he prayed all night that God would not take that child. But he, so he still suffered, but yet God still turned around and blessed him and Beersheba the rest of their life. Be- why? Because David got right with the Lord. He prayed all night, and the next morning when he was dead, the servants even said, we thought he'd be mad. He got up and got went back to business like nothing happened. He said, well, while he was alive, I had a chance to pray. 
God didn't answer my prayer, so now he's gone, so I'm going to get on with life. And God blessed. And he learned to be a person after God's own heart. And i just been reading in my daily thing that before he became king, Samuel said, God told Saul, which was king at that time, he says, God has found someone that's after his own heart. So God knew ahead of time about David before he ever became king. That he was a man after his own heart. It's interesting. So anyhow, uh, so David is teaching Solomon things that he has learned the hard way. Hopefully that Solomon... I thought I did mute it down. For some reason it doesn't doesn't do the, the uh, text message. I hope everything's still working here. Yeah, it is. Okay. The recordings goes through that. Uh, I'm sorry for that. I have failed you. <laughs> I have to find out why I did that. <laughs> so he's learning and teaching Solomon about his mistakes. Now, one of the most important things to do is to get wisdom. And it talks about that throughout the Bible, especially in Proverbs. Get wisdom. So, I can't get enough of it. And my, one of my life verses is James chapter 1, verse 5, which you should know by heart by now. I've quoted it so many times. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally, and unabradeth not, and it shall be given to him. And I pray for every situation. Now, we have a different way of approaching this than Solomon. When Solomon prayed for wisdom, God gave him all wisdom right away. He didn't have to keep praying about everything. We, on the other hand, have to keep praying for every situation. And all. and Which I think is good because we're living by faith where Solomon didn't during that time. He was under the law. Okay, so now in the new dispensation that since Christ died, we live by faith. So that means we have to keep going to God for things. And one of them is to ask for wisdom. But that's a promise there now. He promises he's going to give it to you. Now here's a prayer that I ask for all the time. And for me, I found by taking the time to think. Now here's another thing for me. I, now you may be different. But for me, I find never make a decision right away. Whatever the decision is, whether small, big, or whatever. Relax, pray to God, and relax after I pray. Don't even think about it. And that's how what happened with the, the, the edger. And with a lot of major. Matter of fact, a lot of times she'll say something to me. No, I don't want to do it. And then after I think about it, I went, you know, that's not a bad idea. My first reaction was not the right reaction. So I'm learning, don't make that first reaction. Calm down, make sure I say calm down, not that I'm mad, but in other words, just relax and think about the suggestion she makes. And, uh, and a lot of times it, it's a good suggestion. Now, God gives us some promises here in these verses. In verse 6 of our text this morning, it says, Forsake her not, talking about wisdom and understanding, and she shall preserve thee, love her, and she shall keep thee. Love her, and she shall keep thee. If you're in love with somebody, you can't do enough for them. And that's basically what he's trying to tell you here. He will promote you. Isn't that interesting? He's, I think it's neat the way... God is speaking to us as if wisdom is a person. Understanding is a person. Honor. She shall give thee... A, oh, and down to verse 8. Exalt her, and she shall promote thee. She shall bring thee to honor when thou dost embrace her. She shall give to thy head an ornament of grace, a crown of glory shall be delivered unto thee. These are promises. And God doesn't go back on his promises. Our Heavenly Father wants to do as much for us if we let him. And that's the problem. And the only way he's going to do it is the closer we get to him. And that's the key to the whole thing. 
Now, notice here in Proverbs 4 that wisdom will preserve and keep our children. The great difference today as educators of what I've been learning from my grandchildren is they're not teaching anything like that in schools anymore. Now, college is bad enough, and I fear my kids going to college because of what the teachers are supposed to be teaching math, and they're teaching everything else, philosophy of their own philosophy. And our, even in high school, our kids, our oldest granddaughter, everything seemed to be okay until they hit high school. And the kids, if the teachers aren't teaching, now we have a fairly decent school system here. I mean, he's not let all this junk get in. I, I don't know if all of it's, uh, what's, what's the name of that uh, thing that they push in? Yeah. That's it. We don't have it here, do we? No. I didn't think so. Okay. But the kids themselves are coming in with teaching of their own kids. I mean, what I'm saying, you know, with the, the uh, say my da- da- granddaughter's friends and all. Well, they're living this, and they're saying this is okay and that. My, I never forget my one granddaughter said, "Hey, man, Biden's great." I said, "He is." Yeah, that's what they're telling me at school. All the, uh, they're all going to vote for Biden, Biden, you know. And I said, "Tell me anything good he's done." Well, I don't know that. I said, quit li- listening to them. Let me tell you all the good things Trump did. You know, and I said, you've got to be careful because you're listening to them assuming they know what they're talking about, and they don't. And that's the problem that's happening today with educators. Uh, Pallas, if I'm pronounce, pa- I'm sorry, Pascal, if I pronounce his name right, who said that human knowledge must be understood to be loved. But divine knowledge must be loved to be understood. Exactly the opposite. Now, do you understand what he's getting at here? In other words, if you're in love with God, you're going to understand God more because you'll be researching it. You'll go because you love him. I always used to tell people, (coughs) I may have said this a long time ago, if you're truly in love, or husbands, fathers, if you're truly in love, Back when you first got married and your wife says, take the trash out, you went right in to get it and you float it out there on a cloud and put it in there. (laughs) Then years later, what happened? I'll do it after the football game or after this or whatever. The same love didn't take place there. This is the love that's talking about. It's talking about you're in love with God and whatever he tells you to do, you're going to do it. You'll do it without hesitation. And the closer you get to God, the more you're going to love Him, the more you actually will do that, and you'll want to do it. And that's what He's trying to tell you here. Do we love God? You must love Him to understand who He is. And with that love, you'll understand what He wants from you. Are you in love and willing to be taught? That's the hard part that you've got to come to a realization. And then when that happens, the Holy Spirit opens up Scripture for you. How many times have you read Scripture and didn't get a thing out of this section, and a year later you're reading that same section, and all of a sudden you understand? That's called illumination, the Holy Spirit opening Scripture up. A lot of times you're not mature enough to understand it at that time. But the more you love God, the more that comes together, the closer this knit gets in there. And the next thing you know, you see God working before you even pray sometimes. I've had that happen. It's not, it's rare. But I didn't, I meant to pray about something, and God already answered the prayer I had, was going to pray about. (laughs) We as fathers must teach our children what wisdom is all about. Now, what is wisdom? Basically, in a nutshell, it's the ability to use knowledge. And today, we have a thing. We've got a computer, we've got the Internet. And all. Now, obviously, there's a lot of junk on the Internet, but there's a lot of information. For instance, my wife just found out yesterday that there's another thing that can be done to her bottom of her foot. Now, why did doctors never said any? Did she mention it to you today? Okay. Um, and we have... The results from someone we know that had it done many years ago, and it's been great since then. So now she's going to check that out. But why didn't the doctors tell it? She had so she was on a computer yesterday, 
when she found that out and started doing research on it. There's lots of good information on the internet. I mean, there's so many e-books out there and stuff, good things that you can find out, including the Bible. I mean, the Bible's free, King James Version. It's out of copyright. And there's other ones out there that are out of copyright. Don't cost you nothing. You can download it onto your phone for free. And all. There's lots of good... And I can give you esword.net, I believe. If It's been a long time since I've been there. At that time, I don't know if it's changed, everything they had to offer was out of copyright. And you can get commentaries concordances, everything downloaded onto your either your computer at home or on your phone. I, I mean, you can have enough there that you can produce sermons and do in a real in-depth. And, uh, and it's all legal because he does everything out of copyright. And then he does sell some stuff. Because I, I got a guy that wanted to start preaching, but he didn't have any money. And I gave him that. I finally downloaded it. I had it on a disc, and I gave it to him. I said, here, copy that onto your computer. And you'll have no excuse for and he says, you just got to learn how to use your concordance and lexicons and all this stuff. So the information is out there. So here is the key. Wisdom helps you use the information that you get. And that's what we that's why we got to pray so hard to God about it. Now, let me give you some I illustrations, like ones that at least hit me. I learned something. Teach your children things before they get interested in it. I don't know if that hits you or not. I learned this the hard way, and it was too late for me when I learned it. I'm going to use dating as the first one. Say you got a daughter. Well, and say she's not even begin to be in. Well, let's, let's do it this way. She's about to have a date. You know the date. And she's, yeah, Dad, I'm going to have a date this Friday or, or Saturday night. And you right away you say, okay, uh, daughter, now, you know, oh, we're, uh, we want your home by this time. Uh, we want to, to you know, to, uh, we don't rather you not hold hands yet or, or kiss on the first day. I don't know. You know, everybody's got their own rules. But I'm just throwing some things up there. You know what happens to the girl? She's going, boy, you just took the fun out of the whole date. At that time... That's exactly what they're going to feel like. So, if you now go to your daughter years before she's even thinking about dating. Matter of fact, you sit down and say, I want to talk to you about dating. And you know, her reaction is, I'm not going to date. When you talk to her at that time about dating, it's going to be a positive thing. Because she's not worrying about dating. And you start training her then. And you can apply this with drugs or anything else. And it, believe me, it really works. Because it's a different approach. And you're not hitting them with negatives the day before they're about to go out and do something. And nowadays, with this high school business and all, I just, it blows me away in public high school what's going on. It's just, it's really bad. Especially in the high school area. So, anyhow, think about this. Too many children grow up without a father figure. That's another problem today. One thing I appreciated about my dad was as much overtime as he worked, and he worked a lot of overtime, he always still had time for the family and, and did things together. We went out outings. We did all kinds of things together growing up. My father did make some mistakes. Uh... But what he was human, just like any father is going to make some mistakes. But we have a heavenly father, and we need to learn from him. And guess the best part about it? God makes no mistakes. He does not make any mistakes. In 2 Corinthians 6.18, did I put on the list Matthew 7.11? No. Oh, I'm sorry. How did you know that? Uh, well, you already knew that. Okay. Well, the the last verse I'm going to give you is Matthew seven eleven. You can look that up. But right now, Second Corinthians six eighteen, and I will be a father unto you, and ye shall be my sons and daughters, said the Lord Almighty. God wants to be our father. Everything I read in the Bible shows me that God wants to be the father, and wants to take care of us. God wants to take care of us and give us things when we're good and doing His will. 
and they're in a parent here or the ones on the internet that's listening to this that doesn't want to do go overboard for your kids when they're doing right. You want to reward or you want help. When they do wrong, you want to correct them and try to get them back on the same track. God the Father wants to do the same thing to us as Christians. Matthew seven eleven. If you want to turn to that. Just remember, God wants to be your Heavenly Father. And this is what it says here. If he then, being evil, he's talking about all of us now, okay? If then, ye being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your Father, which is in heaven, give you good things to them that ask him? We do not have the perfect Father here on earth, but we do have the perfect Father up in heaven that can take care of us, and he doesn't make any mistakes. But we as fathers need to be as close to God as we can. And if the closer we get, the more we learn, the better off we're going to be able to teach our children and our grandchildren. And I don't know if I'll ever see a great grandchild, but I hope maybe one day. But I hope this was an encouragement to you to help you understand more fully what God wants and if we just give him what he wants, it's just like Saul. I mean, was it hard for him to do what he was supposed to do? No. And yet he brought the king back. He brings back this, that, and then he blames it on the people. And God wouldn't forgive him. He wouldn't forgive him. You know? So just remember, we serve a righteous God. And, and he wants to be there for us if we would take the time. Let's pray. Father, thank you for this day. And thank you for this sermon. Thank you for Proverbs, the book of wisdom. There's so much wisdom all through the book of Proverbs as well as the Bible. But Father, help us to be, learn from it, to apply it in our lives, use it. Bless the fathers today as we celebrate this day. In Jesus' name, amen. We pray that we have been a blessing to you. For further assistance, call us at 864-270-1472 anytime. Send email to info at stlmm.org or visit our website at www.stlmm.org. Like any ministry, it costs money to operate. Please consider supporting this ministry as God leads you with your prayers and your financial gifts by going to www.stlmm.org and clicking on Donations.